So I'd love to take this opportunity and, and welcome uh, Silas Garrison. He is the CEO of HS GovTech, a special guest here uh, and a real treat for our independent investor audience here uh, interested in uh, software as a solution company. It's a cloud based based company that's providing solutions both at the state and local level uh, for uh, providing efficiency through software. Silas, welcome to the program here. Please take this opportunity and introduce your company, the history of, and yourself uh, to HS GovTech. Uh, Ryan, thank you so much for having me on. I really do appreciate the opportunity you know, to present to your audience. And yeah, as you mentioned, I'm the CEO of HS GovTech. Uh, we are a SaaS provider to government agencies all across the US and Canada. And we focus exclusively on kind of two areas of government. The one is it's local. So whether that's a state level government or municipality, county level government. Uh, and we also focus exclusively really on the regulatory aspect. Um, the HS of HS GovTech really stands for health and safety. So we have customers that are fire departments, agriculture, health departments, that's the majority of our customers. Uh, but we focus on those agencies that regulate private businesses. And, you know, Really, in a nutshell, when it comes to regulating and private businesses from a health and safety aspect, what our customers are doing is, you know, they're providing a permit, a legal operating, you know, license that says you can actually sell food, you can actually run a hotel. Uh, and, and then they're routinely inspecting those businesses to ensure that they're keeping up with health and safety standards. They're within code, so to speak. Um, and then there's also an accounting piece to it all, right? And that's what our platform does is it handles the accounting aspect. You know, whether you're the city of San Francisco's health department, one of our customers, you know, other statewide agency that utilizes our platform, you know, the tens of thousands of permits that you're managing, you're going to charge them every year to renew it. Um, it could be a hundred dollars, it could be 500, it could be more, but you've got to generate thousands of invoices and our platform handles all of this vast amount of information. But at the core of it, what you said, Ryan, is we are focused on helping these agencies, these local regulatory agencies, operate more efficiently through more effective data management. Well, what does that mean? It just simply means doing more with less clicks, allowing them to access real-time information in the cloud, allowing them to process more permits, to conduct more inspections, to do things that actually benefit citizens ultimately. That is what we are focusing on. And uh, a little bit of background about myself, especially since this is largely a new listening audience, I've been doing government and technology for 20 years. You know, GovTech is a sub-industry of kind of the whole technological space, much like FinTech is. And HS GovTech, you know, I've, we recently rebranded and renamed. Um, we were known as Health Space. So anybody doing their due diligence and researching us will run across Health Space because we were known as Health Space just two weeks ago. Um, but we've since renamed and rebranded mainly to fit the future vision of who we have become and who we're going to be growing into. And that is a all-in solution for local regulatory agencies of any type. Um, you know, we're focused heavily on that health department aspect, but, you know, we've just signed on fire departments, Anaheim, California, uh, but also agriculture and more. And the use cases keep you, uh, expanding, right? Our platform is utilized across many, many facets. I myself, like I said, I've been in government and technology for 20 years now, taught myself software engineering in high school, so I'm a nerd at heart, but you know what? Running a tech company, I think that that's probably one of the best things that you can have is having having a nerd run it all, right? Um, but I love what we do. I love, I love technology. I love technology for government. And I will tell you, because I've been doing this for a very long time, there's really never been a better time to really see through the revolution that government is going through, this kind of modernization, IT modernization, as a lot of people call it. Yeah. The government, local government in particular, these regulatory agencies that we serve are going through a heavy series of IT modernization, and it's only picking up because COVID taught them some pretty painful lessons about managing data, having it in the cloud, being more efficient. Uh, you know, it's, you know, a lot of times you, you learn through tough trials that maybe you weren't as prepared as you could be. Uh, and, you know, a lot of ways that means just better technology, more modern tech. And we are at the forefront of providing that for a lot of these regulatory agencies. You sure are. And you've been able to build up a customer base going on 800 plus customers. And I think the sky's the limit. We'll talk a little bit about that addressable market. You touched on it a little bit with the fire departments and your um, your um, involvement with the uh, California uh, fire department. Right. That That's incredible. Uh, Twenty five million in sales pipeline. What stuck out to me, Silas, is your guys's impressive retention rate. 
this tells me that your customers are extremely happy with your product. Do you see that being kind of a driving force going forward in, in referral? Or are you looking at uh, penetrating new markets? Or is it going to be a happy mix of both? You know, it's going to be a, a good blend of all of the above. Uh, really, our core focus is going to remain where our core start was, which was environmental health. Environmental health is just a subset of local government regulation. A lot of people are familiar with the term health department. And they think, ah, oh, health department, restaurant scores. I think, like, that is kind of a universal understood in the U.S. You think, oh, I see the score on the wall or, you know, I go to my favorite eatery. And generally, you want to know that it's pretty clean. Uh, and so, but health departments, especially environmental health, which is a subset within the health department realm, environmental health, they're the ones that actually tackle the food safety, the, the restaurant permitting, the restaurant inspections. But really, their use cases go well beyond that. You know, our platform we have in HS Cloud is our core central product. Uh, it, we have over 30 modules. And when I say modules, I'm talking uh, regulatory programs. A regulatory program can be restaurants, so like food safety, issuing permits to restaurants and inspecting them. A regulatory program could be septic, so on-site wells and yep. water testing, water quality. It can be rabies, uh, and actual animal bite tracking. Hotels, long-term care facilities, dozens and dozens of use cases, business types that they have to issue permits to, they have to regulate, and they're really, they're keeping citizens safe, right? Like that is their, their goal, and we should you know, be enthused, the fact that we as a company and I am, it's what, you know, keeps me going every day that we're actually helping these agencies keep citizens safe by helping them operate more efficiently, the more inspections that they can do, the more that they can keep up with quota, because they do have to inspect based yeah. on, you know, their regulatory laws, you know, we can help them be more efficient in that process. Yeah, absolutely. And I just I just want to double down on that addressable market here, clinical and public health market, agriculture market, fire department market, and environmental health market for a total addressable market of about $2.32 billion. Is that about right, Silas? Did I miss something? Or I know there's been some discussions as of late that you guys would like to explore other uh, uh, markets as well within the government entity. That is that your primary focus or are there other areas of interest for HS GovTech? You know, those are the primary ones, right? So those are where we actually have customers. So we've made market penetration and traction. And the largest, you know, 90% of our revenue comes from the environmental health segment. Environmental health, just that segment of local government alone in the US, is about $120 million a year addressable market size. And when you compare that against, you know, the totality of billions of dollars for all the regulatory agency types that we serve, um, we are focused exclusively on, you know, not exclusively, I should say, but very intently on more of what I would say is the low hanging fruit, right? 90% of our revenue, 90% of our customers are in the environmental health space. That means that we have the greatest namesake, the greatest reputation, the most land grab to get fastest. And so we're going to see most of our growth come out of environmental health because that's really where our, our core passion is begun. But over time, what you're seeing and already are seeing currently, and you will see in the future over the next couple of years is that word of mouth spread, right? One big differentiator between us and any other GovTech government solutions provider is that we are a singular platform. We are a product suite, much like Microsoft Office, dominated and really changed the modern day workforce for everybody uh, who works a nine to five job, essentially, with the Microsoft Outlook that's ported directly into your Excel, which integrates into your Word. You know, nobody started using Outlook and then used the third party off the shelf, non Microsoft branded, you know, mm -hmm. word processing. You know, they, they use Word, they use Outlook, they use them all branded from Microsoft. And we're doing the same thing. We have a full ecosystem of product suites, which we can touch on in greater detail, but all of it is interconnected. And whether you're Anaheim Department of Fire or you are City of San Francisco Department of Health, or you're the Wisconsin Department of Agriculture, you are using the exact same platform. Now it's tailored and configured exactly to their regulatory environment, but you're okay. using the same platform, which creates consistency and it creates better integration for future use cases. Wow, oh, that's fantastic. And while we're on the uh, subject of products here, HS Cloud, HS Pay, HS Touch, My Health Department, and GovCall, which to my knowledge is your most recent addition. If you want to expand a little bit upon that product suite that you have, 
one thing that really was a big differentiator for me in looking at HS GovTech, and I, we were speaking offline, I'm, I'm in big government. And, and I tell you, it's amazing how big tech comes into big government and just says, here's your solution mm-hmm. and, and, and jams it right at us irrespective of what we need, you know, it's, it's a one size fits all because, you know, and that's just how we've rolled. And and I've been doing this a long, long time. How is it that that HS GovTech can differentiate itself? You talked about the customizable aspect of your business uh, to really provide a solution that uh, is not only tailorable, but it's, it's necessary. And, and there's some reciprocation uh, from what you guys offer and what they want um, on the state and local level. Well, a couple of things on that. And, you know, we're broadly classified, you know, HS GovTech is broadly classified as enterprise software, right? We, which means that we do far more than just a little widget. You know, we are enterprise software, which means we cover vast amounts of data for our customers to really complex business processes. Enterprise software, though, in general, you know, whether you're looking at an ERP system from Oracle or some other big uh, off the shelf product, you know, typically you run into two things is it's really, really powerful, but not very flexible or it's very, very flexible, but not very powerful. And the two are very hard to amalgamate and actually make function. And that's even more exclusively true when you're talking about government. There's other solutions on the market that maybe do a lot, but it's, it's rigid, right? You have to do it their way. You, you uh, Kind of what you alluded to, you, you're jammed into their process flow and you kind of have to change your business processes. We have a, uh, a mantra when we're talking to our customers that we believe that software should bend to the way that you do business and not the other way around because we go into so many situations where our customers are leading like a, a competitive uh, competing system and we'll ask them, why are you doing your business process this way? This is very abnormal from what we've seen across the country. Nice. Uh, what we had to do because the software just wouldn't allow us to do it the other way. And I was like, wow, okay, we have a problem here. You've trained yourself into a bad business process because your software was not flexible. We are both. We allow for ultimate flexibility and ultimate power, right? Full customization, if you will. But it doesn't have to be customized, meaning it doesn't require a software developer to punch out exactly what you need. It could be with a few clicks, you could upload your regulatory laws and rules via an Excel spreadsheet. You can modify business workflows with a few clicks. You can automate processes. You know, it's modern, powerful tech built for government. It's that simple. And, you know, it, for, for us, it's just at the beating heart of what we do. We want, to, we want to take the complex, we want to make it simple, and we want it to meet exactly what the customer's actual end use case is, which runs the gamut in the US alone no two counties are alike, let alone when you're operating state to state. And now we actually, we actually have customers in Canada as well. And no two regulatory agencies operate exactly alike. And for that reason, we are very proud of the flexible yet very powerful nature of our platform. And I just think it's worth noting, you guys are coming off of a banner year. 2021 for you guys was record. I believe last I checked, for 5.7 uh, million. That was probably in CAD, I would imagine, Silas. I'd have to double check that. But your guys' revenues has grown. Talk a little bit about the source of the revenue. Um, you, you said a lot in the last, which pinged my attention here, with regard to your, your opportunity going forward uh, and, and how it is that you guys uh, generate revenue. Uh, with your sales pipeline, if you would, Silas. Yeah. Well, a couple of things is, you know, we, that first off, the monetary figures are all in USD. We report exclusively in Perfect. Uh, US Thank dollars. You. Yeah. Yes, so sir. that 5.7 for 2021 was 5.7 million US. Um, as at March 31st, um, 4.5 million um, was recurring. So we put out a sales update for Q1. Um, we haven't actually reported on our full Q1 uh, financials. Uh, which will be coming out in a couple of weeks, but our Q1, just our sales business development process, we closed out 2.8 million in total contracts in the quarter. Okay. Q1 is typically the, one of the slowest procurement kind of months or sorry, excuse me, quarters. So sure. you're going to see a government government, especially in the U S operates on a fiscal budget, typically at the local level, which means yes. July, which means that you're going to see the majority of your contracts in government, uh, close either right before or right after the fiscal year starts and ends. Um, so we expect to be, have a very heated summer, a uh, very good summer for us. So a good Q2 and a good Q3. But still, you know, Q1 being slower in air quotes, uh, we still did 2.8 million in contracts. 
uh, and that's well, you know really adding to our ARR. And you know, right now we're you know, we exited 2021 with an over six million dollar total kind of gross revenue runway. You know, we're not putting out official guidance just yet for what 2022 yes, will look like. Um, but suffice to say that we do expect it to ex- exceed 2021. In 2021, you know, we switched our year end. So it's a little bit when you look at our our uh, presentation, you look at our figures. You know, the last time we reported a full 12 month period. Uh, was July 31st of uh, 2020. Yes, sir. We did 2.6. Mm-hmm. End of 2021, just 18 months later, for the full 12 months in 2021, we did 5.7. So basically, mm-hmm. we're really over doubling our revenue growth. And that, I really want to underscore it, that is during a pandemic where yeah. we were not able to close all the business that we really could have because, again, our core market being health departments, they were saddled, burdened yes, with, sir. you know, the first year of the uh, COVID-19 was them just tracking, contact tracing, doing a lot of things with like actually just monitoring the, the inflow of new cases. The second year was all about VAX rollout, so mass VAX sites, vaccine distribution, and all sure. of our health departments, our core market, were responsible, the front line for all of that. And uh, you know, the $25 million sales pipeline that you mentioned, Ryan, we have deals in there that were looking to close in early 2020 or to come to fruition. And we had customers straight up tell us, listen, until this pandemic kind of subsides, yeah. yep. I'm not going to ask my people who are working 80 hours a week already to go implement a big software. So, you know, revisit us when, you know, kind of the pandemic subsides. Right. And we are now only about two months into it truly being fully subsided from the public health standpoint, but suffice to say that that's just going to accelerate additional growth, even though we already basically doubled our revenue year over year. Man, I, I, I was fired up when I was reviewing your company and you know, the irony in the whole thing, if you haven't been paying attention, the markets are in turmoil. Okay. No, nothing can get uh, any type of favor in this market. So I think it's ironic Silas that you're sitting here talking about all this success behind the curtain when everybody's talking about doom and gleam, gloom on the front of the curtain, I want to change scope a little bit. If we're moving into 2022 and things are as exciting as you allude to, the sales team, uh, from the perspective of meeting that demand, are you guys going to be able to do that? Number two, can you talk a little bit more about the uh, board of directors, the management team that you've got and the experience and how that kind of helps play into the success that you've been able to enjoy over the last couple short years? Uh, of the company yeah absolutely so i first off the people i work with right I, I, every single one of our team members uh i i i've never worked with really a stronger group of people and i'm talking everybody from the software engineers that we employ who maybe aren't from this space right they may not have a deep background like i do in working with government specific technology but Darn if they're not just great technologists and phenomenal coders. And I'm just grateful for every person we work with. But when it comes to a leadership team, not just the board of directors, our board of directors is very well suited with a lot of financial markets experience. You know, my chairman of the board um, in particular, who I work very closely with, you know, he's got, you know, 25 years in capital markets experience. And, you know, it's really beneficial to have that as a publicly traded company, right? Um, but, you know, we also have people that have been in this space in environmental health and local government regulation for 20, 30 years. Uh, and in our senior leadership team alone, you know, I'm 20 years into this, but our senior leadership team, some of those folks have way more experience than I do. You know, um, yeah. we have folks that are former government who used to run large scale health departments for 20 years and retired and went into the private sector working with us. And, you know, those are great people to have. Uh, as not just subject matter experts, but just people who really have a deep beating heart for what it is we were trying to accomplish. Uh, and we have people that have been selling in this space. Uh, some of our sales team, two individuals in particular combined, have over 50 years experience. Hundreds, you're talking hundreds of years experience working in, inside of, selling to, building nice. for, all within this kind of local government spectrum. And I will tell you, government is an expert driven sale. You have to understand, you have to walk the walk, you have to talk the talk, oh, yeah. and you have to get what their pain points are. And that is one of the reasons, not the only reasons, but it's definitely an element of our success is having those people who just instinctively can relate on a phone call, on a sales demo to what it is we're actually trying to accomplish for them. We're not just trying to hawk software, we're not just trying to 
sell them the next data management platform, we're truly trying to, what we call build, bring them beyond data management. Government knows that they need software. They know that it needs to be in the cloud. Those are two foregone conclusions. We don't have to convince yeah. them of that. Nope. What we do and what we're working with them on now, especially post pandemic, is that they can do more than that. They can collect online payments. That's our HS Pay solution. They need to engage with their citizens online. That's our My Health Department solution, citizen engagement portal, having online services just like the private sector does, allowing you know private businesses to apply for their applications, renew their permits with a click. Those are vital services that they should be offering and they want to be offering, but very few really solutions exist where they can seamlessly do it like we do. Um, and then we have you know this whole notion of virtual inspections. A lot of people view, and it's true, historically, government is an in-person type of workforce. You see the restaurant inspector, they're in person, they're monitoring you know, what's going on on the ground. But a lot of the things, especially when you talk about like a follow-up inspection, a follow-up yeah. inspection means, Ryan, you did something wrong, I'm gonna force you to get it corrected and I'll follow up with you in a day or two. Yep. But those follow-ups can be virtual. And the pandemic really taught us that, that wait a minute, a lot of times it's just a visual spot check. Uh, did you fix the leaky valve that was dripping on the food? You know, and you could yeah. just send a, 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 a receipt, you could actually get on a video call and our GovCall platform, which we charge a premium for, the GovCall platform is teleconferencing built for government, just like we're on this you know, stream yard. This is a very specific type of video engagement teleconferencing platform that's meant for you know streaming onto I know yes, YouTube sir. and digital channels. Okay. GovCall is teleconferencing video conferencing built for the government use case. You know when they engage on a video call for a virtual inspection, they're conducting a legal regulatory activity. That means that it needs to be cataloged in their data management system. It needs to be recorded that who was there. We even offer AI driven transcriptions. So all of these things are meant to provide that all one stop solution, that product suite that gives them the most flexible control over who it is and how they do it, but also the most powerful, intimate, rich data set that they can leverage and utilize to make themselves more efficient. Fantastic. I want to invite my independent investor audience. I just released the profile, uh, my profile, my due diligence on HS GovTech, and uh, I, I really enjoyed it. I, I'm going to leave the link in the description below, as well as the uh, link to the website uh, for HS GovTech. There's too much to unpack on these. I would highly encourage you to kick over there and check out Investor Slide Deck and all the uh, additional information, news releases, and all the amplifying information that we've discussed on this interview. HS GovTech is traded uh, on the US markets over the counter uh, under the ticker symbol. It's there on your screen for you, but I will also provide that in the description below as well as any other uh, information that I used in the making of this video. Guys, just to start to close this down a little bit, we've touched on a lot. We've touched on the fact that the solution the software is there, okay? The idea right now is the integration in that to make that interface between government agencies and the customers and the public that we serve easier and more efficient. HS GovTech is right there at the forefront of this. But I wanna invite Silas Garrison to have the last word as we close it down. Silas, is there anything that we missed through uh, the course of the interview. And I also want to thank you on behalf of the channel. We're going to be closely monitoring your guys' progress. And I tell you what, momentum is is behind you, my friend. It's right there and it's going to be exciting times into 2022 and beyond. Silas, the floor is yours. Well, I'll say a few things in sum summarization here, Ryan, is, is one, I got to have a personal motto that passion really is the predicate to productivity and success. And I'll tell you that I myself have been doing this for a very long time. There's nothing I'm more passionate about. Um, and the same goes for my team. But beyond that, we have, like you mentioned, a lot of momentum behind us. There are sizable competitors we go up against, multi-billion dollar companies, and they're losing out to us. And the reason is not just because our tech is better, which is true. Our tech is more advanced and it's better, more modern, um, but our service is better. And it goes back to that passion element that we actually care for the customers that we serve and we're going to provide a solution that is ultimately better and makes their lives easier and ultimately i have never seen a better time i've been doing this for 20 years i know people who've been doing it for even longer and when it comes to gov tech in general like selling technology to government especially at the local regulatory level really the market is so hot they i, I we have we were at an in-person industry conference which by the way are back now that COVID largely dissipated 
uh, we had an in-person industry conference out in California. Within the first two days of wrapping up a presentation there, we had a county reach out to us and say, hey, we're ready to move. They saw one presentation. This. And it was largely because we have success stories that they, we can point to. It's like, okay, your tech looks good. The window dress is awesome. You sound good. But then government wants to say, show me where it is working in the real world. And we can do that 800 times. And that's, that's it. So I'll tell you, I'm very excited about what the future holds. You know, 25 million in the sales pipeline, 4.5 million are occurring now. And suffice to say that that's just a drop in the bucket of what the future really holds for us. And I say delivering the goods on the independent investor channel. Silas, we are in debt to you for coming on and sharing your story with HS GovTech. We'll be closely monitoring your progress and uh, love to invite you back to the channel for an update uh, for our uh, greater independent investor audience. Thank you so much, Silas, for your time. Really appreciate it. Hey, thank you, Ryan. And thank you all for tuning in and watching.